out there, back at the bench, and the time has come. We're going to do the Vallejo Mecca color lineup test. Um, this is every one that I have. I have, and I also have the varnishes, uh, the matte and the, the gloss. But for this, we're going to be uh, just testing the colors because I'm saving the, uh, the gloss test to be tested on its own against other glosses. All right, I'm fidgeting around here. This is, uh, this is every one I ordered. I've had these for a while, and there was a couple of them missing. I think this metallic red took me a while to find, um, but it was just one that I wanted. Um, I'll go through what I have here. White, gray, off-white, yellow, orange, red, SZ red, that's Sazabi red. I don't think they have the rights to call Sazabi, so they're just calling it SZ, but that's Sazabi Red. Magenta. Dark Red. These are in numerical order, by the way. That's why the, the way they are. Titan Blue. Light Blue. Sky Blue. Deep Blue. Boy, I ordered a lot of blues. How about just blue? Hold on. Electric blue. Isn't that a song from the 80s? Turquoise. That's a nice color. Yellow okra. Pure black. Oops. Uh, yellow fluorescent. You know what that is. Orange fluorescent. Nope, oh, there you go. Magenta fluorescent. Well, that's bright. Green fluorescent. They have everything but the one I wanted. Blue fluorescent. Sorry, guys, I'm blocking the camera. And uh, Mika Zuki's back here. Uh, gun metal. Here's all the metal colors up here. Gold. Copper. Steel, light steel, dark steel, metallic red, metallic blue, oops, there we go, and the last one, I'm guessing, metallic green. All right, I'm going to mix things up a bit. I sprayed some earlier, so they're hardened. For a couple days, and we're going to do a uh, tape test and a durability test because that's the draw for these. These have a, supposedly have a lot of polymer in them, and it lets you uh, let you pose your Gundams and uh, the frames, and, and so you can bend and twist them. And they're supposedly resistant uh, to that kind of uh, we'll call it abuse. So we will be testing that. Um, these, I believe, need when I tested them needed to be slightly thin because they're not air. If, if it was. Uh, Airbrush Ready would say Mecha Color Air, I believe. That lineup hasn't come out yet. Maybe they will do it. But for these, they're kind of thin. You can almost hear them. But uh, I'm going to thin it out like I did uh, my other Vallejo stuff with their Airbrush Thinner and their Flow Improver. Now, I also have this Retarder Medium. This slows down the drying time for a smoother uh, leveling. You only call, well, for the amount I'm going to be doing, probably one drop. You know, probably two to three drops total, even you're doing a whole job. Um, I'll put these in some and not some of the others. I'm going to see if there's a difference is what we're going to do. But that's it. I'll show you uh, the thinning ratio um, right now. And they have to be shaken quite a bit too. And I'll show you my shaker right now. Let me pause the camera and grab everything. All right, guys. Uh, quickly pause there. Um, here we have my, my paint shaker. And I will show you that in a second. This uh, technically is a... Uh, fingernail polish shaker that's uh how it's classified it's a powered one you don't want a battery operated one on this and um you just take your paint all right lock her in here and that's it i usually have it under uh, a piece of this rubber like this and it doesn't slide at all well i'm not on here on my regular desk it's sliding on the paper and then if you can see it, it'll shake side to side, then it'll go up and down. It does a good job, too. While I'm preparing the airbrush, 
and getting some of my stuff. I let it shake for about a minute. And um, that's it. It works great. You stop it here. It comes with a couple of these elastics. And uh, there you go. Look at that. Fully shaken up. You know, now I'm probably going to do this white gray. So what I do is while I am uh, prepping this one, and it'll make a different noise depending on where the bottle is. I'm trying to make it quiet so we can talk. See it? It's a whole different sound. So anyway, that's how that works. And let me show you the ratio, how we are uh, going to... Oh, you can hear. Look at that. Mixed up beautifully. Um, I'm going to do this white gray over here. I'm, I might do the Sazabi red because that's different. Uh, I got some already painted, so you don't have to worry that I might be skipping some of these. I'll, I'll pick one of these blues, you know, maybe the sky blue. That's different. Um, I'll pick a fluorescent, and I'm going to do a lot of these metal colors. I won't do all of these steels. You know, we'll do the gun metal, the gold, the copper. We'll pick one of these steels and uh, maybe one of the color metallics, and we'll go from there. We want to see how it performs on the airbrush and how durable it is. So anyway, here is the mixing. It's got a real heavy pigment to it. You see how deep that is? Now this obviously is going to have to go over white. It is fairly thin, so we're only going to thin it out a little bit. And the flow improver too we're going to put in. So with this, can you see it? I'm going to put about four drops. I go by my eye. It's how I mix my stuff. You, you guys will know what I'm talking about. You get used to it, you know. Two drops of the foam pover is all we need because we're not really, we're not doing that much. And uh, this is it. This should get us a spoon covered. Now, I like to hold it up to the side. See how it's clinging to the side? How's this? We'll go around this way. See it? And if it runs down, even that's fine too, you know. People like to streak it upwards, um, but I think I think it's good to go. If it's too thick, you know, I would even go with extra flow improver instead of thinner. You know, I think that's the way to go. I'll put another drop or two in this. I want to see if I can show you guys different consistencies. One more drop of flow improver. There we go. Just streak it up, and that's it. This is a really, really deep, it's not even like see through the yellow. You can tell this is going to be good paint. All right. So I guess we'll start with the yellow because I mixed that one first to show you guys. And um, that's it. I want to show you the shaker. That's how I'm going to dilute it. And uh, off to the airbrush. We're going to cover, uh, if it's yellow, it has to go over white. But if with these metal ones, we're going to try it over maybe a black and then and a gray maybe. We'll, we put those over. I primed white, black, and gray spoons. So we're ready to go. All right, guys. Let's head over to the air booth and check this stuff out. All right, guys, we're at the booth. We're going to start with the yellow. That's the one I mixed to show you. Uh, this is primed white. Um, I primed it with that. Tamiya, uh, Tamiya uh, fine white in the spray can. And then I have black spoons and gray. Here we go. Wow, it is smooth. I mean, it, it just comes out beautifully. Um, with this, not being an air product, you know, game air, I'm going to flash dry it like I do on my other videos. I was told by them that most of these dry in a matte, matte color, not gloss. I'm just drying it with some air. All right, let's go again. I'm trying to get close, but I keep hitting the camera. A really, really nice yellow. Very nice. Make sure you start spraying off of the piece and then come in. I think I can get pretty close with this too. The paint has a sweet smell to it. For you guys out there who use Vallejo will know what I'm talking about. I think that's it. I'm not going to try this over a black or the gray because it's yellow and we kind of know what's going to happen here. I mean, I, I, it's not even running like 
normally I would get with most acrylics. Look at that. Wow, beautiful, huh, guys? All right, let me get the next color. I had to clean this out pretty good because the next one's white. I should have started with white, but I mixed this to show you guys, so I threw this one in first. I will be right back. Alrighty guys, next one up will be white gray. Now for this I'm going to put it over a light gray spoon. It doesn't look gray in the camera, but there you go. See it? So this way you can see the white going on. But I did like how the other one went on. It went on really nice. I got the sheen on there, so I'm going to do the flash drying like I recommend. That's pretty good. I'm wondering if this is going to come out shiny because it's pretty shiny right now. I'm flash drying it, just so you know. I like these off-white colors, particularly if you're going to do a a, a, Gundam, a white Gundam. Instead of leaving it that white, plasticky look, or just regular white, this off-white is a great color. All right, we'll let that dry. Look at that. Went on beautiful. It's got a touch of gray to it, just like it says. Wow, really nice. You can't see it here. We'll show you to you... Uh, under the proper lighting. All right, guys, up to the next color. All right, guys, here we go. Oh, I'll hold it up. Sazabi Red, SZ Reb. I call it Sazabi, but they're calling it SZ. There we go. I'm going to put this over white again. These brighter colors, I'm going to put just over white. Whoa. I get a low of this. Does that come out? All right, I'm going to use the old air dryer trick. As you can see, once again. Nice color. It probably looks like it's just red to you guys. No, you can see it. It's got that Sazabi pinkish hue to it. The stuff airbrush is really nice. I'm calling that done. Look at that. Beautiful. Great color. All right, we'll let this dry. On to the next. All right, guys. Don't mean to bump the camera. Sorry about that. I'm going to need another white spoon, but this is going to be because it's uh, sky blue. Um, I picked one of the blues. I figured uh, I haven't done one this light, so we'll try this. All right, now, got to go with the uh, blasting uh, the cool air technique on it. My acrylic technique, if you don't know what that is, watch my other video. I find these lighter colors, these very light colors like this one, you really should do the, the slower technique that I'm doing here with the flashing of it off. It, it really is necessary. Now you can see it's all dried, it's not even shiny anymore. So we're going to go with the next coat. And don't forget to shoot off of the piece first and then come in. And with each coat, you can bring in the needle a little closer to the piece. All right, I'm going to flash this off again. I'm probably not going to show you air I'm not going to show you airbrushing every one of these uh, as I've already done at least four of them in preparation for the durability test. I'm not spraying guys, I'm still drying it off. So uh from here, I think we're going to go to uh, the metal colors after this.
Nice blue. Very nice. That's it. That is it. Look at that. That is nice. All right. We'll let that dry. Off to the next color. We're going on to the uh, metal colors. All right, guys. I don't want to say I lied, but I'm going to go with pure black for next. Then we'll do the metal colors. I rarely test blacks. I am doing the super mega test of all the flat blacks coming up. But uh, let's check this pure black out. I'm curious. Of course, we can use a gray spoon for this. So. Of course, it covers quickly. I'm going to flash dry it. Probably only need two coats for this. This, of course, is as dark as it gets. It's drying off really quickly with the flash drying, though. Look at it. It's completely dry, just about. Yeah. This does not take many coats. Oh, there we go. We get to see black. <laughs> All right. Now I promise it's a metal color coming up next. All right, guys. As promised, reach you back for it. Gun metal. We'll put on gray and black and see what we get. We'll even start with the black. Wow, this... This goes on terrific. Wow. Almost like it's an, an all clad. It even goes on a little differently. It, does, it goes on with that sheen. It doesn't run. Wow. Well, that's over black. Let's see how it goes over this gray. I don't think I have to flash dry it, but let me do a little bit. Yeah, this this covers beautifully. Boy, this is this is a highlight so far. Wow, this is great. If you guys are waiting for the metal colors, yeah, maybe you're not surprised. I am. I this just went on beautifully, beautifully. Look at that. Wow. All right, well, the round spoon is gray. Well, you can see the black right there, so we'll know that that's over black, but it looks like it covers in a way that it doesn't matter from here. But we'll let it dry, and uh, we'll move on to the next. I'll go pick uh, one of the steels or the golds, and uh, we'll do most of the metal ones. Now that I'm so impressed, I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. Gold. We'll put this over black. That. I mean, it looks good to you guys there, but if there's a lot of black showing through. I think I should cover it a little more. It goes on nice, though, doesn't it? I'll put it over white, too. Um, I didn't have to thin this one as much. It seemed to, uh, it didn't seem right. As I was thinning it, so I uh, barely thin this one at all. I'm not sure why, but it looks better for that. It's a little too showy for me. You know what I mean? It's got a little too much of that metal flake in it, almost like a hot rod. You know, I mean, it's a good thing we're testing these because the gun metal is perfect, but this, this is a little, little garish for me. But anyway, I'll spray a white one too and. Uh, We'll move on to the next color. All right, guys, on to the next. It will be copper. Um, at this point, I'm not sure it matters what it's going over, but we'll put this over a, uh, a spoon, a black spoon, a shiny spoon. Let's see what we get.
Hey now. All right, let me let that set. Let's try it over white. All right. Talk about two different colors, huh, guys? Wow. All right. Let that sit. Let's put the white. I wonder if I got to flash dry this one. I'm trying to keep this one on the light side so it looks completely different. Wow, it does too. Wow, I'll call that it. Look at that. All right, let me go grab one of the steels as we move on. All right, guys, light steel. I'm gonna do the light steel and I'm gonna do the dark steel. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm trying to think of how we should go over it. Gray, black. Let's put it over black. This stuff airbrushes, I mean, it's effortless. You could just, it's just flowing out of the brush, like barely an effort given, you know? That's over black, let's put it over a white one. Oops, hold on. I think something happened to my uh, fitting there. Nope, show you. Nope, that's it, sorry. Finish this one up. I think I'll lick it over the black. Wow, it's great. Wow, it's gonna look good. When it dries, it's gonna look really good. All right, guys, let me finish this one up and I'll uh, move on to the uh, dark steel. All right, guys, sorry if I bumped the camera. We're gonna go in with uh, another black spoon. This is dark steel. All right. This stuff just, it's just terrific. Man, particularly these metal colors. The gold, I wasn't crazy about. But this, the, and the gun metal, right up my alley. This is done. It's literally done. Wow. Wow. All right. Let's put it over white. Here we go. Over the black, I, I didn't even have to do the flash dry, so let's try it again on this. No, nope, it's going on the same. At least we can determine how it looks over the two different primers. So if you guys don't need it, don't use it. Save the money. That's it. That's it. Right. So the oval one will be uh, white. The regular looking spoon is black. They look almost the same, so it looks like you might be able to save your uh, money as far as primer goes. All right, last one. I'm gonna do something special on the last one. I'm gonna try something up a little bit. And uh, you'll see right now, we're gonna try and shoot it straight out. Alright guys, last one, we'll do a metallic blue, but I'm meant by something different. We're going to shoot it neat, we're going to put it right in the airbrush, no thinner. You're watching, see it, nothing in there. Oh, let's put the cap on. Sorry if I'm getting in the way guys. There we go, straight in. White spoon for the blue. It's spraying really dry. See it? But it is spraying. It, 
it does seem to be struggling, but it, this is a metallic. I probably should have tried it with a solid, but I have a feeling I can get this done. I'm going to flash dry it. You know what? It's, it's a little more effort, but it works. I had to open the valve way up, which means I turned the air pressure up a little bit. But look, it's still in there. And that's it. Look at that. Huh? So it worked neat. It worked without any uh, thinner. I probably would still put the flow improver for the needle. I just wanted to try it straight out of the bottle like uh, the air stuff. And it looks like it works fine. And so I think you could stretch it out more by uh, thinning it, which is get your money's worth. If it works either way, you might as well thin a little bit, you know, double your bottle pretty much. Anyway, I have to let these things dry. We're going to do a tape test, a durability test, and uh, we'll go over the colors at the end. And uh, see you back at the bench. Okay, guys, the results are in and uh, these at the table here are the ones we sprayed you saw me live these are the ones I sprayed a few days ago to check the durability that's why they're up here they're a little different and um, before I start you guys really should invest in this fast orange hand cleaner um, particularly when you're doing um, acrylics just squirt it in your hand and uh, everything comes right off this thing's lasted me a year it's almost out now and um, I'll see if I can find right if I got it, and I'll put the link below. But this stuff is terrific. It's uh, it just it cleans your hand. I wash my hands after every airbrush session, and uh, they come like uh, I just woke up. Look at that. Uh, anyway, um, all right, let's go through the colors and durability. We'll go through those. Now this was the yellow. Look at that. It just airbrushed beautifully, just like the uh, the air series. Really, I mean it it, it it's uh, it's just as good. We'll check durability to see the difference. If there is, in fact, we'll compare it to the Air Series. But that was over white, and it just dried. It just dried so even and perfect. All right, let's go in with this white gray. This was over gray primer, I believe. This was just over white. A little bit more of a sheen on this one. I put this one on a little on the thicker side, and it looks like it came out with somewhat of a gloss. Whereas this matte uh, finish, um, I put this one really light. So, again, I guess if you build up the coats, this is as shiny as I've ever seen this paint, to tell you the truth. But it's a great off-white color. Now you want to compare it to white, just compare it to the end of the spoon. See it? It's almost gray. Well, white gray. Anyway, great color, particularly uh, um, a two-toned... Um, Gundam, you know, we do all the different panels in a lighter gray or a light white or a darker white. That That's perfect. All right, Sazabi Red, SZ Red, I should say. Very nice color. Now, dig into our spoon bin here. This was Bloody Red from Game Color, and it is. It's different. I mean, if you see it in person, it's, it's a bit different, but not much different, to tell you the truth. You know, I, I, I thought it would have been more different. This is their model air red that one's different this is a much much deeper velvety red and again it's tough with the camera but Sazabi red SZ red really nice these straight colors here brushed really really good sky blue look at that I'm working on a, a custom that's uh, it's a dark gray and a sky blue like this kinda like that and the trim is all in the light blue. Really nice. Look at that. Wow. That, it just airbrushes is terrific. It, and you guys, you want to know, this still isn't quite dry. That's why I did these. Um, I have something coming in that's going to speed up drying. That's going to be a special video. <clears throat> One falls down, they all fall down. Back here with Mika Zuki. Sorry, Mika. Hold on a second. There we go. Those are the ones we didn't test. Pure black. And it's pure black. Nice semi-gloss, though. Smooth. Nice. 
I'll take screenshots at the end, guys, so you can see the colors up close. Like, I'll, I'll get the camera as close as I can. All right. Gun metal. Over black. Look at this. I'm quite blown away by this. This, uh, it has a really nice all clad look to it. And uh, it went on great. This isn't. This is over the black. This is over the gray. I think, uh, or the white. Look at that. There's no real difference. I don't think I really had to worry about these darker steel colors over different. Well, you can see it here. It comes out a little different. Let's compare it to Vallejo metal colors. Here's Vallejo metal steel. All right. Oh yeah, it's got more of a sheen. The metal steel. Let's see what I got here. This is magnesium. Now it's closer, but the metal colors from Vallejo seem to have a sheen to them. See, both of these are from that series, and these are not. See that? I knew most of the, the Mecha colors were a matte finish, and, you know, that shows it right there. Really nice. Really, really nice color. Look at that. That's a great frame color. Wow, that's awesome. Gold. Now I'm not crazy about the gold. To me, it's a little gaudy. It's got that. See, it's got that sparkly look. I don't like. This is over. This is over black. This is over white. A little better, but um, see if I can find. A, hold on, guys. One second. This is my all clad bin here. All clad. This is all the oil clad test I've done. Wow. And, um, you know, see, this is uh, gold titanium. I mean, this is, when I think of gold, this is what I'm thinking of, you know. This is like a car. Again, let's pull up my street car here kit. Uh, this GTR. I'll go this way, you guys. See, now that's what I'm thinking of when I think of that gold. That This, this sparkly, you know, gold. And when I want my metal color gold, I want it to look like that all clad. So gold is a tricky color. You know, it's just a tricky color. What is this? This is gold titanium. You know? I mean, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. But that's the one I'm not crazy about. This gold. I am not crazy about it. However, two different shades by over putting it over the black and over the regular primer. Copper. Another one I'm not crazy about. This is it over black. Again, it's that gaudy look. Well, it kind of matches the bottle. This matches the bottle better. And this is over the white. Two complete different colors. Look at that. It probably looks good on the camera, but it's really metal flaky, which I just I just don't like in my uh, my metal colors. I want them to look like that. Now we're getting into some good metal colors. Check this out. Steel. Well, this one's light steel. The one coming up is dark steel. This is over black. Oops, off the camera, guys. I'm sorry. And this is over the white. Or the gray. Was it over gray? I gotta go back and watch the video. Look at that. Well, these, again, I don't think it matters much. For some reason, these metal colors, these besides these gaudy colors, I call them gaudy, they look different over their respective primer. These did not. They just came out kind of the same. This one's a little lighter, but it could also be the shape of the spoon, too. The way the light's hitting it, because it's pretty close here. No, it's a little darker. The black spoon's a little darker. But a terrific color. It's got that smooth metal look that I like. All right, let's go to this one. Dark steel. All right, over black. And over the gray. Look at the difference. See it? You can see the darker shade. But it's see, it's got that smooth, beautiful... You know, what's the all clads? You know, I mean, the all clad has that. See, the all clad has that look, that pure metal uh, look. You know, you don't see the the the, the pearl in it or anything. You just see the metal color. You know, that's why I like all clads so much. But these these in particular are really good. These are really good. What are these? Three bucks a jar. I mean, 
you're getting the results you want. That's exactly the color I want in the steel and the dark steel for sure. Metallic blue. Now, remember what we did with this? We shot it straight out of the jar. Now, it comes at this dull, even though it's metallic, it has a, a semi-gloss or a matte finish. This one I shot a while ago. And I thinned this one a little bit. And look, it's got that same look. This is metallic red, by the way. Look at that. You won't even see it. But that, that, I like this. I like a, a matte finish. It looks more like a, a metal, like uh, like these parts here. You would trim your, your kit with that. I think it would look terrific with that. I think that's unique, a matte colored uh, metallic. All right, now these are the ones that I've done uh, a couple weeks ago, preparing for the test. Metallic red. Real nice color. I really like this. Let's put it up against the Zabi red. Look at that. There you go. There's your two tones right there. I like the subtle look. This will look good doing different panels of that. And then this. This is a cool color. I had a search for this too. I don't know if I got it on eBay or Amazon, but my two of my guys didn't have that particular color in stock. This is fluorescent green. Oh, they call it green fluorescent. Look at that. And that matches. Oh, wait. It's a little darker there. This is oval white. Turquoise. Here, we'll leave these down here because we're going to scratch test them right now. Turquoise. This is another beautiful blue. Look at that. How good does that match, huh? And magenta. Another sharp looking color. Look at that. Perfect. And the longer it dries, the smoother it gets, you know. But that's it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a tape test. Check this tape dispenser I got, guys. I took the Tamiya, Tamiya tape out of its little dispenser that it comes in, and I put it in this one. And look, it clips to your table. And look, and then you can swivel it no matter where you're sitting. If you're going to do a lot of masking on one of your kits, you, right, you just pull her out. Look at that. And you can, you can uh, secure it anywhere. I can put it up here on my shelf and if I want to reach up and out of the way. Isn't that great? I got this at, uh, I think, Joanne Fabric. Uh, craft store you know but let's go ahead and try the tape test all right I will let that sit and for the other test let's try and uh, rub them I mean my fingernail I can see marks I can see marks on it. Hold on, let me buff it out. Yeah, it took a little bit, a little rough. It didn't chip off, though. And I think that's what they're trying to say. Oh, it marks it up, though. However, it didn't chip off. I think, when they say durability, I think they're talking chipping. See it? Look at the marks. I think that's just me scuffing it. However... It's not chipping off. So I think handling the kit and posing it, I don't think you're going to have a problem. Let's try this. Not, a, not at all. The tape isn't affected at all by it. Oh, I took a piece off, guys, right here. Look at that. So, I was a little rough, but still... See, when you peel off your tape, though, I peel it off slowly. You know, I go like that. I think this is an anomaly because I think I was whacking this piece with the others earlier and I might have, might have chipped it. You know? Because I don't, I don't think the tape, I don't think the tape would affect this at all. No. And sometimes you get a residue and you don't. You know? However, it did chip. I don't know what this is, but it did chip. So there's the durability. It, it gets cuffed up pretty bad. I mean, I can go with my fingers. I'm going pretty hard here, guys. It doesn't seem to... It seems pretty durable. So I think in, in general handling, the tape it should pass. I think I chipped this when I was doing the other thing. 
because uh, I was actually tape testing this for a couple of days now and it passed the test quite well. Uh, let's try the metallic red. No. Yeah, I, 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 the test I did, it, it, it passed well. Anyway, I think it's durable. It, 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 I'm marking it with my hand, but it's not, it's not, you know, it's not flaking or popping off, you know? So I think as far as posing it and moving it, you're not going to see any of this. I mean, I'm really laying into this stuff. I'm laying into this pretty heavily. So uh, now here's the Vallejo Game Air Chainmail. All right. Wow, this looks pretty close to the light steel. Holy crap. Look at that. And this is just as durable. This ain't doing, this, this ain't going anywhere. And I think if you clear coat some of this stuff... This is the steel over, or oh, this chamber. This is steel. Yeah, this the this seems pretty durable. This seems a little more durable because I'm getting some light marking on this just by touching it. If you can see it, see it, and I didn't get it on these. That I don't get unless I'm really digging in. So it is more durable, I'd say, right now than the air lineup. And uh, plus, I think we should seal this stuff off. Personally, I think we should seal it off. But uh, anyway, guys, that's the test. I got uh, some more stuff in the works over the weekend. Some good tests coming up. And uh, I got a big shootout with the decals and that stuff too. Um, I'll take a close-up picture right after this video ends right now. And you can see the colors up close. And you can pause the screen and see which color you like. And uh, any questions, write me below. Like the video. Subscribe. And I got plenty more to go, guys. And uh, I want to thank you guys for subscribing and enjoying. And I love all your questions. Keep writing me. And we'll see you soon.